Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we are going to cover the one thing that is guaranteed to make your war attacks better almost immediately. It's something that I do after each war and I have the luxury of doing it because, well not because, but during the, the QC sessions after I make my videos. But before we get into this, I decided I want to sponsor my own videos. So I'm going to show you my own little advertisement here. And no, it's not for Gemstone Legends. So here you go. Let me know if you like this. This video is brought to you by my company, Resin Solutions, where I make river tables, uh, river boards, I encase memorabilia into epoxy. And basically, if you can dream it, we can do it. So check us out at Resin Solutions by SD.com or at my shop on Etsy. Yeah, that piece right there was actually <clears throat> the, my anniversary present to my wife. So, in the, if you, I don't know if you could see it, but the writing in there said, Tell Death Do Us Part. <clears throat> so, anyways, back to business. In business, there's something called a post-mortem. And in the military, it's called an AAR, an after-action review. Most of you have probably heard of this, I'm sure. But here's my recommendation. When you're doing your war attacks, record them. You don't have to have the sound on. The sound, um, you know, if you want to talk yourself through the attacks, that's, that's cool, great. Some people don't like to hear their own voice, especially when they're sick like me. But, um, you know, you can, you can record or not record, but then you can go back and you can watch the battles where, that you lost. And, you know, it can be tough to watch those, but you got to pick them apart. It's kind of like practicing, you know, to do a speech or something. You record yourself and then you go back and watch. It's the same principle here. Before my last war attacks, there was a couple of things that I wanted to do. I wanted to see if I could match tiles a little bit differently, go for a little bit bigger matches to try and keep the board shuffling and to try and make cascades that would give me more than one match and one move potentially. And get a a turn up on the enemy teams there were a couple matches where that didn't happen so what i'm going to do now is i am going to walk you through my aar process post-mortem is a cooler name but you know I'm, my background was more military so um, i'm used to the aar term so we're going to do it i'm going to walk you through my action after action review process here so let's go over and i'll bring up that um, video. All right, so here is the video from my second attack. This attack, we were going up against Amethyst as the tank. Now, I did not have, or I brought an anti minion, anti fiend team. This team didn't actually have any minions on it. So you can see that I brought this team, especially Arco, here. Um, in order to deal with Amethyst's fiends. But let me pause the video for a second. Now, the rest of the team is not, a, is not bad. This is a good team to bring into here, I think. Uh, the mana control was important in this um, attack. Uh, let's see, Ojima here probably should have been swapped out or Jaquan. I have him. And at very fast speed, he gives blind to purple. So I that was a, a huge, huge oversight on my part. Because just Leonidas and Penulite, they're both average speed, so they're going to stay together. And the two of them firing is, well, 100% is going to kill Amethyst. And it would probably kill or almost kill most of the rest of the team. So, big oversight on my part. That would have allowed me to get going with just two yellow matches here. And uh, let's see, let's, let's go ahead and play here. So now I'm trying to figure out the first move to make. And I ended up going with this green match here. I know it's confusing, there's two pointers. The pointer that's on the screen right now is my original pointer. So I'll just let that do the work. Now. 
I made that green move, which I think was probably a good move. I didn't have a whole lot, and I was trying to set up the reds and the yellows right there that I'm pointing to. I end up talking myself through doing the dragon bomb here, which I think was also the right move. Where I made the mistake was in this move here, where my pointer is right now is the move that I think I should have made. Right here, I should have bumped this over and taken my first yellow match. What that would have done is... I don't know what it would have brought up or cascaded here, but it would have allowed me at that point to pull this over and bring this yellow up to here. And had I done that, I would have been able to, um, to make a second yellow match. Instead, what happened was I separated my yellows here and... The other, the second problem, let me pause this before I get too far ahead of myself. The second problem here, and had I brought Jaquan, I would have been able to fire at this point, which would have greatly reduced the, the threat by Amethyst here. Now, uh, let's see, lost my train of thought. Oh, Ruby. I don't use Ruby enough, and Ninja Heroes are... They charge differently than most. And I had a red match that I just made on the screen here because I thought that that might take Ruby to her second charge. If it did, I would have been able to hit Canel here. And had I hit Canel with Ruby at, my, at second charge, it would have reduced the mana on all three of these and, um, and, and slowed their mana down. So it looked like a stupid move. And it was a stupid move because I didn't know how short this was going to be. And it's only because I don't know Ruby very well. I don't use her enough. And so you, the, you know, the, le the lesson that I learned here is don't take a hero into a battle that you're just um, guessing on. You know, especially ninja heroes where you don't know how many tiles it takes to, to, um, to fire them. So, had I known my heroes better, I would have fired Ruby and not made that red match there. I would have went on to another match. So, let's continue moving forward here. And at this point, I've already made some, some wrong moves that I could have seen ahead of time. And now I'm trying to charge Arco to get rid of these fiends that I know are coming. But... These two are having a heyday with my team at this point. So it's a little, I'm a little late here. I'm firing Ruby just because, and it, basically a Hail Mary there. And, and at this point, I have nothing. I have no reds, I have no greens, I have no yellows. And my team is on the ropes. And Amethyst is going to fire her third special. At this point, I'm just running out the battle. So we ended that one there. So my my lessons, my takeaways was the um, not knowing Ruby and trying. I had a and I an idea. This is cover myself there i had a um a desire to try to change the way that i match the tiles but really i think the way that i do it is fine um what i the decision point that i come to is a natural pause for me anyways when i'm matching tiles if i have like one match up at the top or in the middle of the board and I can cascade something, often I'll sit and think about that for a second and then I'll take that match where I need to better look at the cascade. So I'm not going to try to change my playing style so much anymore as just when I come to that natural pause, I'm going to look more closely at whether I should cascade, whether it has the potential to lead into something better. That's a gamble that oftentimes pans out 
Now, before that last match, I had a match that I won. And that match, if you remember, I brought Guardian Gazelle, and Gazelle wiped out all of my mana. I was able to recover from that, but again, that was from me not knowing my heroes well enough. Now, I use Gazelle all the time. That was the first time ever that she's been killed right before a bunch of heroes fire. So, I don't know if I didn't notice it before or whatnot, but again, know your heroes as best you can. I was able to recover from that, but wiping out all of the mana on heroes that were fully charged, that, if you saw me in that video, it really gave me pause for a second there. I really had to stop and figure out what just happened. So let's go ahead and move forward. This is going into the second battle that I lost. Now this is against a team that I could have beat with all four-star heroes, honestly. This is not a good team here, and I made... I made a, a mistake. Now, you can always lose a battle if your board is bad enough. I brought El Duke here, and I even said when I was going into this battle that he's just a random that I'm plugging in. I, I was thinking very fast speed. If I don't get any yellows or blues, then I can, I can use El Duke. And that was a terrible idea. In going back and watching this, we'll see why that was a terrible idea. What I should have done is brought my Elizabeth. So in the last battle, I said the team was good because Ruby was mana control. And while I play defensively with a defensive specialist, um, and which I can't do in these battles, but I sort of can. I can if I take a fiend generator or a minion generator that acts defensively, those fiends and minions don't get wiped out. I mean, the, if, if they don't say that they're undispellable, they will get wiped for a turn, but the next turn they get put right back on by the fiend or the uh, minion. So this was a mistake. I should have brought Elizabeth instead of El Duke. I should never have said I'm plugging a random in here. I should have thought better about how can I mimic my play style with um, the heroes that I've got in Equalizer War. So the other thing here is if I don't have any yellows and not enough blues to make something happen here, I'm going to have reds because there's not any other colors left. So I don't need a very fast hero. What I should have done was made that diamond and hit the diamond immediately Instead, what I did was I made a second match over here because El Duke only needs two matches. So I figured I could fire him and then fire the diamond and ch charge him again. That's the right move for him, but had I brought Elizabeth here, I could have just fired Elizabeth. I mean, I could have fired, I could have just hit the diamond immediately and fired Elizabeth and put a fiend on everyone on this team that would have cut their mana, which would have been a huge benefit. So the board would look a little bit different than this because I would have hit that diamond on the first round instead of the second round. But then if they would have all had the fiend and the mana, the minus 24% mana cut, it would have given me more time to figure out how to better play this. And now there I was trying to, when I did this move right here, I was, trying to bring up um, yellows from the bottom, but I already had a yellow match there, and the it's a, it's a gamble if you do something like this, and I wanted to try it in this battle, but I'm not sure what I was hoping for, because if we back this up just a little bit here so i knew this was going to stay here because this is the one that i moved to make the dragon bomb once i'm i'm not sure what i was hoping would come up here uh that's the where i need to pay more attention to if i'm not going to take a match is what i was talking about at the end of the last battle if i'm not going to take a match 
I need to figure out what I'm gambling on here, which is common sense. I know I'm not saying anything that anybody doesn't already know. But the thing is, even an experienced player can go into a battle and then in the heat of the moment, make a bad decision. So this is the mental process that I walk through. I'm just saying it out loud for you right now. And if you record your battles and you go through and you look at how these play out, you'll see matches that you missed and you'll be able to figure out why you missed them. So we'll keep, we'll keep moving here at this point. Now I'm, I can tell that I'm in trouble because even though this is not a strong team, I'm just completely unable to put anything together here. So I ended up hitting, I think I hit the dragon bomb here because again, I was trying to clear and that move wasn't terribly bad because it gave me a, uh, a blue dragon bomb and it set up that holy match there. But at this point, at this point I needed to get a heal. So the next mistake that I'm going to make here, so I took this match, which is fine. And then this match to get my healer ready. And I noticed that Elizabeth here is ready to fire. So you'll see here, she's ready to fire. And instead of firing Esme, I tried to find a non-blue match and, and wait because I was thinking, okay, if Elizabeth fires, her damage isn't that great. But I wasn't factoring in if all of the minions hit Esme as well, which you can see they do. Well, they don't all hit Esme, but enough of them hit Esme too. And there's so many minions out here. I just underestimated the amount of damage that I was going to take there. And having lost my healer there was the end of that battle. So had I, had I healed with Esme and allowed the... Um, you know, allowed the, the fiends to come on, I could have dealt with that better later. I needed, I had a fire immediately that I needed to put out and the fire that was going to start in a minute, I could deal with that when it starts. And instead, I decided to deal with the fire that hadn't started yet and I let this fire burn and I lost that battle. So that was, that's my takeaway from that one. So let's jump back to the board here. Uh, not the board, but the game. So <clears throat> that in a nutshell is an after action review or an AAR. Basically record yourself, go back and watch the battles that you lost and try and figure out, watch your team. How did you set up that team? Why did you pick those heroes? And were you making a mistake right from the beginning? Did you pick the wrong heroes right from the beginning? Do you have other heroes that would have made better, you know, a better team? And then were there obvious matches that you could have made that you didn't take because you either, like me, you underestimated the damage that you were going to take, or, you know, like when I didn't charge, when I took the match but didn't end up charging Ruby, was did you have a hero that you didn't know well enough in there? New heroes often do that, where you just level up a hero and you're like, yes, I'm going to take this hero into battle now. And then you go in there and maybe misuse them a little bit. So don't really understand the best way to get, um, you know, the best, the most out of them. So um, let's see. Yeah, that's the major stuff I wanted to cover. And, and yeah, the last thing that I wanted to say is after you do your AAR, next, the next step is to go into here, hit edit team. So I'm doing the AAR going into another battle. I mean, another war in a couple of days. So I'm going to leave the team set up that I had set up for this war, but I'm going to make some changes right now. So this team I'm not necessarily going to change right now. Actually, no, I will change this right now because I want to keep this train of thought. If I don't end up needing Jaquan in here, like if they don't have purple tanks, then... I will, I can change this later, but I don't want to forget what I was thinking when I go in, you know, when I'm 
got the attack in mind and I go in here and I can't remember what I was thinking during, after the AAR. So after an AAR, you add an IP to that, an improvement plan. So it's usually called an AAR IP. And the improvement plan is what we're working on right now. So we are going to improve ourselves by doing this. And we fixed this team, I think. This is definitely a better version of this team. Unless we go up against a bunch of minions. And then we could put Ojima back in there. And if we do go up against a bunch of minions, especially um, minions that do something like poison, then I'm going to um, swap out Ruby with um, Zhao 2. So this should either be Ruby and Jaquan or Zhao 2 and Ojima. So I will maybe make a note of that up here. So what I normally do here is just put anti minion. And for me, that anti minion reminds me that it's the Zhao 2 Ojima combo. So that team is fixed. This team worked well, but I'm not sure. Nemesis worked really well there, actually. I think we'll leave her. That's something I'll have to look at before the next um, attack. So Grimble, this is already, you know, he's a potential substitute. I already know that. I'm not going to use this team like this if there's no minions. This team, I... I don't think I'm necessarily going to swap out Guardian Gazelle. I just need to be aware that, you know, <laughs> that she could die. Uh, I already have Aramis in here that can heal her, so I don't know there's much else I can do. And this team I already switched. I was not happy at the end of that battle, and I went in here and I switched that. But I decided at the point where I went in and switched it, I wanted to make a video to show you how to do the, the AAR process that I go through. So I have Elizabeth in there now, and this team worked well. This has always worked well for me, but why did I use Krampus? Because that was the hero that I was used to seeing in there. Krampus doesn't help me in that war. I mean, he, he gives attack up, but I have other heroes that, that can do that, or I can do defense down. So... Um, I have Tethys if I want to do, if I want to move these around. Or I have, um, I think I moved her down here. I never use her, so I took the emblems off of her. But Adelinda, Adelinda is a very good hero. You know, fiends in this war is are, are good. Her fiends don't do anything except damage, but still, they're beneficial. Tethys doesn't have minions, so it's not, you know, if one of them had minions, then I'd put that one in to help Pengi. But generally speaking, mm, let me look. Let's, let's do a little bit of homework here, well, as long as we're in the middle of the improvement plan. Um, deals 395 damage to the target and nearby enemies, and Tethys... does 300% damage to the target and nearby enemies. Now, they take water damage, and all ice allies get plus 60% attack. She may actually be better in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this team, and I'm going to go raid for a while with this team, and I'm going to swap those heroes in and out, and actually used to attack with Athena. If they had a red hero that was off to the side here, I could hit with Athena right here. And then she will give the elemental defense down to the red hero and the the um, the barbarian defense or the whatever it's called, that cascading defense down to the the three that she hits. So Pengi would end up firing all over the place and there would be four heroes with defense down. So I like I like uh, Athena a lot. 
but I'm going to, you know, play around with them. They're all at average speed, so there's no speed advantage. Pengi, ha you know, has to chill for a minute while these guys catch up. But other than that, um, this team is going to be better than it was last time because of this. So um, I think Tethys is probably a better choice because she gives the 60% attack increase to Sobek who hits all as opposed to just doing defense down to three then Sobek does extra damage to three but not the other two so um yeah and then let me do this right now so we're gonna try this this might be a new team that I play with for a while where did they go Engi there. All right. I like this. This is, uh, this is an interesting team, and I'm going to go raid with them for a while. I hope all of this helps the process that I go through. Um, if you like it, let me know. If you think that there's something else I should have added to the AAR, let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, other than that, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.